Japan is an archipelago very close to the Asian mainland. And in the 1100s, Japan's government became dominated by the samurai class. Now, they still had the emperor, but the rulers set up these shoguns, and they were you know, very powerful samurais. And the last shogunate, where we're going to pick up the story, was started by Tokugawa Iyasu back in 1603, when he defeated all the other samurai warriors from other parts of Japan and created this unified orderly society. You can see in this presentation that there is an opportunity for you to click on a link to a BBC documentary that shows you uh, a key battle in 1600. So if you want to see one of, you know, a recreation of one of the greatest samurai battles of all time, um, here's another video that you can link to. Um, Yasu unified Japan, moved the capital to Edo, um, the city that we now know as Tokyo, and set up this very um, organized, feudalistic, you know, very structured feudalistic society. Now, if you've got this country that's made up of a chain of islands, it is important that you have, uh, you know, different kind of local leaders. And these local leaders were called daimyo, and they had autonomous control over their domains. And during Tokugawa shogunate, there were about approximately 260 autonomous domains within Japan. Now, again, I'm calling this centralized feudalism uh, in the sense that it looked like feudalism. It looked like, uh, you know, the society that was organized very similar to what you remember learning about last year with the lords and the knights and the peasants and that kind of thing. But in this case, it wasn't something that was set up organically for everybody's protection, but rather it was something that the government had organized and was very strictly adhered to, uh, whether or not people had a natural inclination to organize themselves that way. Um, the government, the shogunate, was very strictly controlling of the feudal classes. For example, the daimyo were ordered to move to the capital Edo every other year. Um, only samurai could be in the military or hold public office, and there were many restrictions placed on women as well. Um, the samurai are interesting. They are warriors. They followed a code called Bushido, which demanded absolute loyalty. You had to, you know, be honorable and brave, but your loyalty could not waver. And if you were not able to uphold this code, the samurai um, were called upon to kill themselves in this ritual suicide known as seppuku. Now, the shogunate, the Tokugawa shogunate, is known for a lot of economic growth. Edo is booming. Lots of trade is happening within Japan. And the fact that every other year, the dime you had to move to Edo meant that there was constantly, you know, households being moved and that created a lot of economic demand. Um, it's interesting, this little kind of image here of, um, of Edo, but they had a population of about a million people, which maybe doesn't seem that much by today's standards, but at the time that was m more than uh, London or Paris had. Um, the last thing to mention about the, the shogunate at this time is they adopt from the Chinese Buddhism, but it's adapted a little bit. It's called Zen Buddhism, which involves meditation, devotion to duty, and the precise performance of everyday tasks. Zen monks were scholars. It was very important to read. And a lot of times Zen Buddhism can seem contradictory. You know, if you're compassionate, you fight to kill somebody. And to have freedom, you must follow rigid rules.